when I was 16, um, my dad actually murdered my mom and it was devastating. Hi, my name is Nicole Bajron and I grew up here in home Louisiana with my two brothers and a mom and a dad and my childhood was not a very normal childhood. Um, I had a very controlling father. You know, we weren't allowed to uh, spend time with any friends or, or have any relationships with our family. Uh, we were very sheltered. Uh, basically, if it wasn't for public school, I would have never eaten at a restaurant or been to the movies or gone bowling, you know, things that normal kids do. Um, I didn't learn how to ride a bicycle until I was 16. So um, it was not a normal childhood. Uh, in fact, it was a nightmare. Uh, my dad was a very heavy drinker uh, and drug user, and there was a lot of anger and um, abuse and jealousy in my parents' marriage because um, of my dad's unfaithfulness to my mom for many years. My brothers and I would always have to pull my parents off of each other. Uh, my mom always had bruises all over her body and, and black eyes and um, it was it was chaos and um, you know as a child uh, I really survived on about four hours of sleep at night because I was you know just staying awake listening to my parents fight and um, I would make myself you know physically sick because I was so afraid of of what my dad would do to us or do to my mom um, and so I just wished for uh, normal parents my whole life and I and I just wondered why God had put me in this family and when I was 16 um, my dad actually murdered my mom and it was devastating and um, I can just remember feeling hopeless and not knowing what was going to happen to my brothers and I and, and still so angry at God and you know I wanted to know God why did I, what did I do to the deserve parents like this um, you know why did you put me in this family so when my mom died my aunt and uncle my mom's brother uh, adopted my brothers and I and they started bringing us to church and uh, I never heard the gospel before I never heard about Jesus um, and when we started going to church, I, um, I still had a very hardened heart. I still um, was holding on to all that pain inside and um, the anger and, and hatred in my heart and I was still very mad. Um, but um, as weeks passed, uh, living with my aunt and uncle, you know, I began to see the love that they have in their marriage. It was just completely opposite of the home that I grew up in and um, I, I saw the way that they treated my brothers and I, you know, they, they took care of us and they loved us. And, um, you know, my whole life I felt like a burden to my parents. I felt unwanted. Um, and so I just could not believe that, that these people that I only met a few times, you know, wanted to take care of me and they wanted to love me and provide for me. Um, and, God really used that to soften my heart for Jesus' love for me. So one Sunday um, at church, as the preacher was, um, you know, talking about how God sent Jesus to die for us, um, I just started sobbing and uh, my heart, you know, this hard heart that I had just completely broken. Um, I was softened and I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I thought, you know, there is a God that loves me so much and he sent his son to die for me. Even while I was a sinner and uh, he loves me and he died so he can have a relationship with me. Um, it was just unbelievable to me, but I put my, my faith in him and 
I decided to trust him. So I began, you know, reading the word, reading the Bible and uh, praying to God and starting to have a relationship with him and all that pain that I had inside and um, the anger and the hatred that I, I held on to, God just started to uh, wipe it away and replace it with joy and peace um, in Him. And, and I found who I was in Him. I found that you know He had a purpose for me. So before I had accepted Jesus, you know I I hated my life, and um, you know I couldn't see past that. I couldn't see that God had a plan for me and he's allowed me to have forgiveness in my heart um, when I thought that I never could because he chose to forgive me. Um, and now I get to serve him with my husband and, and raise our children in a, a healthy home uh, that loves Jesus and teach them about Jesus' love for them. So, if you weren't here Friday, you didn't get to hear the song that Josh wrote, and so we decided we were going to do it again tonight. I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about how it came about. So, um, God put on my heart this, 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 this realization that people normally think that people are good by nature and that they sometimes mess up. But God put on my heart that that wasn't the case. People are, by nature, absolutely wretched. We're absolutely evil things. And, and I don't want, if, if that upsets you, good. Because, because there is a way that we can get out of that. Amen. There is a way that you cannot be wretched. You can be healed. And that was the, the driving force behind this song that, that no matter what you're going through, no matter what, you can call upon the name of Jesus and that he can heal you, he can be your shield, and he will give you strength. Amen. A minute to midnight Your world could go up in flames tonight You just need can save you from the fight, the pain from this broken life, the flashes of madness inside your mind, have to be afraid, salvation's behind you. Call on me, oh, I love you. 
Amen. Amen. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down. Sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh,
I just want to thank all the leaders and the teams and the volunteers that have made this thing a success. Look, without you guys, this wasn't happening. That's right. Yep. You were vital. I uh, just want to thank PM Productions. These guys are behind the scenes working hard for this thing to go off without a hitch. Eric, Andre, and Keith, thank you guys so much for what you've been doing. Kristen's going to give you guys a number of decisions that were made, and it's quite a few, and we're excited about the souls uh, that the Lord has just redeemed from hell this past couple of days. That's right. How was that Pastor Liah? That's some good stuff. Look, let me tell you, those guys love cooking, and we love eating. <laughs> well, look, we're going to start off. This is our last message, and, and I'm excited to be with you. It's been a privilege. Thank you so much for coming. Um, for those of you who have accepted Jesus, I just want to encourage you, when we follow up with you, maybe you have a church that you've attended to plug into a local church. Look, the reason that this thing happened is because of the local church and the local body of believers coming together and outreaching to the community. And so it's very important to be in a church. Um, this lie of I can be at church while I'm fishing or golfing, that's a lie. That's a lie. We need each other. We need the body. So if you've accepted Christ, make sure you get with the church. Don't forget how important it is to be with a family of believers because this world could be so tough. We need one another to come together and to form that bond. Make sure that you go to a church that believes Jesus is God and he was in the beginning with God and that he has all authority and that it's only through him that we can get to God. Heaven is a gift. Infinite power is the title of this message. It describes our God. We talked about undefinable love. We talked about the inner self the first night and then undefinable love of God the second night. And tonight we're going to talk about the power of God. And again, we just can't wrap our minds around it, but he's so powerful. It means he has infinite potential, potential beyond our imagination, potential that can pierce our hearts. And he does that through his son, Jesus Christ. And what I hope tonight is that we'll see that he can save you, but it's only if you accept his son, Jesus. Let's start off by reading scripture. I don't have this on the slide. This is kind of something the Lord gave me and, and wanted me to share with you, so I'm going to go through this and speak just real quickly about it, and we'll get back to the, the planned message. Sometimes the Lord kind of throws some things in there. Maybe some of you need to hear this tonight. Psalm 81 started in verse 7. You called in trouble, and I rescued you. I answered you in the hiding place of thunder. I proved you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would listen to me, let there be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any foreign God. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice, and Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart to walk in their own devices." Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Here's the promise. This is the first promise. Those who hate the Lord would pretend obedience to him and their time of punishment would be forever. Here's the second promise. But I would feed you with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. So the first promise is one that walks away from God and doesn't follow God. The second promise is the one who is righteous, found righteous with God. He will satisfy you. Just like God provided salvation for the Israelites, delivering them from slavery, he delivers us from hell, from sin, from fear of death, from doubt, from addiction, depression, all by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Those that don't accept, the Bible says that God will give them over to their enemies. Make sure you live here tonight knowing for sure where you are going when you die. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that walls would be broken down, that hearts would be surrendered to King Jesus. Father, that we would see a movement of your spirit here tonight like we've never seen. 
Father, I pray that those sitting in here that do not have a relationship with you, that they would make a decision to step out in faith at the end of this message and give their life to you. Lord, we pray that you would have your way with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. God is able where men are not. God is able where men are not. Eddie Hall, check this pick out. Eddie Hall was declared the strongest man on July 9th, 2016. He lifted just over 1,100 pounds, deadlifted. Now, I don't want to take credit from this man. That's pretty fascinating, okay? It's like deadlifting a large cow. I mean, that's pretty impressive. But what I want you to see is that man has limits. Who's lifted 2,000 pounds? No one. We have limits. But you see, our God does not have limits. God is able. He's able to save. Some of you are sitting in here and, you, and there's circumstances going on in your life and you're trying to find a way out and you, every avenue you go down, you're just hitting a brick wall. But what I want to tell you tonight is that God will save you if you have a true, genuine decision to trust Jesus and to believe in him and to follow him and lay down your life and say, Lord, I am literally saying you are Lord and I am placing my all at the feet of your cross do with me what you want to do with me. He will save you. Romans 16, 25. Now to him who has power to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation about Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept silent for long ages. Matthew twenty two twenty nine. 29. Jesus answered them, you are deceived because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. God has the skill, ability, and power to do whatever he wants. He is creator. He is almighty. He is all glory. Verse 20, let's look at it again. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. How do we get that power? I was, okay, I'm reading this scripture. I see that. I see that we have access to this power. But how do we get that power in our lives? How can we overcome our circumstances? I think that's a question we all ask ourselves sometimes. How do we access this power? I can't stand here and adequately describe his abilities to you. I will fall short. I can't do it. By God's power, he knows us inside and out. He knows our thoughts, our passions, our abilities, our desires, he knows us. He created us. Would you admit that our thoughts travel too far sometimes? Too far, our consciences don't like it too much. I mean, it's like, whoa, I didn't mean to think that. That's kind of crazy. Whoa, let, let's backtrack. We're flawed. We're human. God knows all those thoughts. Nothing is hidden from him. God answers prayers, unspoken prayers. God is infinitely more capable to do more than we can ask or think. He is God. His power is displayed in the incomprehensible depths of Christ and his work on the cross. How can one fathom giving up their own child? Most of us in here have children. Can you imagine offering up your own child to die so that everyone else in here can live? Think about that for a moment. You see, we believers can claim Christ's love and know that through the Holy Spirit, Christ's power works within us. But if we don't have a relationship with Christ, we won't have access to this power that we can live life with joy in whatever circumstance we are in. Listen to this truth. This is good. God always accomplishes what he starts. Philippians 1.6, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion to the day of Jesus Christ. Do you know what this means? This means that once we accept the free gift God gives us in Christ Jesus, that he has redeemed our soul and that he will bring it to completion when we die in heaven. God will complete what he started. You see, my friends, I can't stand here and not tell you the whole truth because the Bible makes it very clear there is a heaven and there is a hell. It's very simple. If you accept Jesus into your heart, then you go to heaven. If you reject the gospel message, you go to hell. 
Hell is a place full of pain and torture. Hell makes the movie Saul look like a Disney flick. Scripture is very clear on how horrible hell is, but Scripture is also very clear on how amazing and glorious heaven is. This same power that completes us in heaven is the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. And it's the same power that will rise you from the dead when you place your trust in Jesus Christ. You see, there's power in the blood. I've been saying that all three nights because there really is. Without the blood shedding of Jesus Christ, there would be no salvation. There would be no opportunity to have a relationship with God. It's truly because of Jesus. You see, we were all created to be connected to God because in the beginning, God created a perfect design where his people were intimate with him. His people would talk to him. But yet we decided to sin and that sin broke our fellowship with God and it was like this great divide between us and God. And what happened was that broke God's heart because God loves us and he desperately loves us and he made us in his own image so he wants to have a relationship with us. And so that's why he took his place on the heavenly throne, came down in this pain-filled world and he named himself Jesus because it was the most common name. We know God was a servant, right? He was humble. He could have had some great heavenly name, but he named himself Jesus. The name Jesus was everywhere. It's like Mike and Tom today, right? He came down and he made a way for us to get back to him. Scripture says that all we have to do is repent from our old life and believe in the risen Christ. And so what does that look like? That looks like if I'm faced this way and I'm walking down that road I've been walking down, repent means to do a 180 and face God and submit to him and follow him. But by making that choice to turn and look towards God and believe in Jesus Christ, transformation happens. Your soul is redeemed. God gives us the promise of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives us power within and strength within to live the life that God has always designed us to live. And then the beautiful picture of us getting back to God's design. And what does he do? He says, okay, while you are recovering, while you are seeking my face, I'm going to throw you back into the world and tell others of what I've done for you. Go back into that broken world and tell everybody what I've done. That's what he calls us to do. It's very simple. John 14, 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God is so powerful that he sees our every thought, passion, inspiration, and hope. As John Phillips says, quote, we can only see the here and now. God can see the then and there. Let's look at how God went above and beyond what Paul expected. You see, Paul was a missionary. Paul was a murderer at first, and God changed him, right? Had an encounter with Jesus. He was changed. And Paul went on these missionary journeys. Well, Paul wanted to go to a certain place in Asia, and the Spirit kept him from doing that because God had something bigger in store for Paul. Let me share it with you. Acts chapter 16, verse 6 through 9. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, and they were prevented by the Holy Spirit from speaking the message in Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, where the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So bypassing Mysia, they came down to Troas. During the night, a vision appeared to Paul A Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, cross over to Macedonia and help us. You see, God knew Paul wanted to share the gospel in this certain region, but God had a bigger story for Paul. God had a bigger plan for the church and for his glory. And just to give you a little background, this is where he planted many churches, ultimately changing the Christian landscape of the future. This was in Europe. After Paul's stint in Europe, it allowed him to then go and plant a church in Ephesus. God didn't ignore Paul's plan. He had something bigger in mind. God doesn't ignore your plan. He's got something bigger in mind. But that plan isn't fulfilled unless you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. God is able to do abundantly more than we can ask or think. What is something in your life that you can relate this to? Think about it for a moment. Have you been seeking God on a certain issue? Maybe you think you should be somewhere else, doing something else. God has a bigger plan for you. But it begins with his son, Jesus Christ. That's the framework. 
That's the foundation is Jesus Christ. You see, I lived my whole life trying to build my own foundation. And every time I would kind of get it a little built up, it would tear back down. And then I'd move on and build some more foundation and start building framework. And then it would be tore down. I could never seem to gain ground. But Jesus is our true foundation. He's the one that can give us life. Maybe you're here tonight thinking about your life. You're thinking, maybe you're thinking, I'm not worthy to accept this message, this simple message of hope, peace, and love, the message of Jesus. Think about it for a moment. You were made in the image of God. He cares for you so much. He made you just the way that you are. What you have is a sacred gift from God. But you are not perfect and you need saving just like I need saving. And that's only done through Jesus Christ. I, I can't help but think of the life, tra life transformation that happened in Joe from a physically diseased homosexual into a man who cried out for forgiveness living his last days in peace. I can't help but think about the life transformation that happened whenever a lust-filled man turned into a man that adored his wife and is walking with the Lord. I can't help but think of a, of a young, foul-mouthed man, and, and God turned him into one of the greatest evangelists, D.L. Moody. You see, God's power transform. It transforms us into something that we cannot even think or imagine. In a few moments, I will ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes, but I want to ask a question as the band comes up. If you were to die tonight, do you know without a shadow of a doubt where you're going? If you were to die tonight, do you know without a shadow of a doubt where you're going? First, listen very carefully. God's word says that we all mess up and fall short of him. No one here is perfect. Scripture says we have to admit that we are a sinner to be reconciled to God. You might say you're a good person, but even good people break God's commandments. Jesus made that very clear that even our thoughts break God's commandments. Jesus came to establish a new law in our hearts but it requires us accepting the free gift of his, of his son, Jesus Christ. What if we put all your thoughts on these screens? What would we see? Maybe you say, oh, I don't do anything bad. I don't act out bad. I'm really a good person. I make good grades in school or I made good grades in school. I have a good job. I'm successful. I provide for my family. I do all the good things according to the world standards. The problem with that is that's not God's standards. That's the world's standards. He took the penalty we deserve. Think about it, my friends. Because of the mistakes in our life, we deserve to be on that cross. But Jesus loves us so much that he took our place. He took our place. He died on the torture device we belong on. The shedding of his blood is the price he paid for you and me. Then you must turn away from your sin and this means to turn away from the mistakes in your life and trust Jesus. Lastly, to be born again literally means that you receive Christ into your hearts. Jesus came on a rescue mission and he's seeking you out tonight. He has the life raft. Remember a couple of nights ago, those of you that were here, we talked about sometimes in life we feel like we're drowning and we can't find the boat, we can't find the life raft. But I'm telling you, my friends, that Jesus has the only life raft that will save you. Jesus said, if you'll speak of me before men, I'll speak of you before my Father who is in heaven. But listen carefully. If you deny me, I'll deny you, he says. So you need to make a public stand for Christ. And I say that because scripture says it. Jesus said to Matthew, get up and follow me. And Matthew left the table with the tax collectors and followed Jesus. Jesus approached Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, get down from that tree. I'm gonna eat with you tonight in your house. And Zacchaeus got down from the tree. Philip baptized the Ethiopian leader with his entourage watching. They didn't believe in Jesus, but he didn't care. He took a public stand. Now I'm going to ask you to make a public stand. Realize that this is an eternal decision. Jesus says, you are either for me or against me, with me or opposed. Indecision about Christ is a decision. 
indecision about Christ is a decision. The time is urgent. You don't know if you have tomorrow. Close your eyes and bow your heads, please. To publicly declare that you will follow Jesus, turn from your old ways and turn towards God. Come up now, don't wait, get up. Come now in this final moment, come now.